The message God has for you this morning is that God wants to give you the key of David. Hallelujah. Tell the person sitting next to you the key of David. The key of David. David. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And when God talks about giving you the key of David, God is talking about bringing you to the place where your life will be a testimony. There will be a manifestation from your life. There will be exploits. There will be breakthroughs that are noticeable. That can be seen. That can be talked about. That are tangible. Jesus took the keys from Satan. Satan stole the keys from Adam. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 18 says, the Passion Translation, the living one, I was dead. This is Jesus speaking. But now look, I'm alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys that unlock death and the unseen world. Amen. What a testimony. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Do it better for him. What a testimony. For those who are doubting whether Jesus rose again from the dead, this one is another scripture that confirms. He says, the living one, I was dead. But now look, I'm alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys that unlock death and the unseen world. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Say keys. Keys. I say keys of the kingdom. Keys of the kingdom. Say this morning. This morning. I will receive the key of David. I will receive the key of David. And I will do what is expected of me. And I will do what is expected of me. And the name of Jesus will be glorified. And the name of Jesus will be glorified. With the key of David. I will enter my family stronghold. I will enter my family stronghold. And I will do what God expects me to do. And I will do what God expects me to do. And it shall be done. And it shall, and it shall be, done. be done. In Jesus' name. In Jesus there are some name. of you sitting here until you take the key of David and you go by yourself. Under the anointing you are receiving this moment, you, you know into the, your family strongholds and take authority, a lot wouldn't happen anyway. A lot wouldn't happen. So you need to pay attention. Just, don't, 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 just get focused on what we are doing. Get focused. Because God is delivering into your hands the key of David. That you will go back. I'm not going back for you. God, has given, God is giving you a responsibility. You are a child of God. You are supposed to take authority and bring down the reins of the adversary in your family. Amen. It is your responsibility. Amen. He's empowering you this morning. This Easter morning. He's empowering you to go, my child. You can do it with the key of David. It doesn't matter what has gone wrong in your family. It doesn't matter the generational curses that have been raised against your family. It doesn't matter the weakness, the poverty, the lack, the shame, the humiliation, the disappointment, the discouragement, the uselessness in your family. It doesn't matter. 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 What matters is your key. Hallelujah. It's the key of David. The key of David. And you go in that authority. God. And then you stand on your authority mm. knowing that you have been empowered. Hallelujah. And you do the needful. Empowered. And God will just go ahead Amen. and do what you are supposed to do. Amen. Let me read again Revelation chapter 3, 7 and 8. It says, write the following to the messenger of the congregation in Philadelphia. For these are the solemn words of the Holy One. The true one who has David's key, who opens doors that none can shut, who closes doors that none can open. Hallelujah. I know all that you have done, 
Now I have set before you a wide open door that none can shut. Amen. For I know that you possess only a little power. Yet, you've kept my word and haven't denied my name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a round of applause. Yes. yes. Jesus holds the key of David. Over here, what the person we're talking about is talking about Jesus. And this morning, he's calling you to enter the door of destiny. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Say, I will enter the door of destiny. I will enter the door of destiny. It is my destiny. It is my destiny. It is what God has said about me. It is what God has said about me. It is God's plan for my life. It is God's plan for my life. And I will enter that door. And I will enter that door. And take what belongs to me. And take what belongs to me. So I see myself. So I see myself. Entering the door of destiny. Entering the door of destiny. And once I get in there. And once I get in there. I will do the needful. I will do the needful. In Jesus' name. Amen. So read, I'm going to read again Revelation chapter 3, 7 to 8, and then just read with me. Say, write the following to the messenger. Write the following to the messenger. Of the congregation. Of the congregation. In Philadelphia. In Philadelphia. For these are the solemn words. For these are the solemn words. Of the Holy One. Of the Holy One. The true one. The true one. Who has David's keys. Who has David's keys. Who opens doors. Who opens doors. That none can shut. That none can shut. Who closes doors. Who closes doors. That none can open. That none can open. I know all that you have done. I know all that you have done. Now I've set before you. Now I've set before you. Now you have set before me, Lord Jesus. Now you have set before me, Lord A Jesus. A wide open door. A wide open door. That no one can shut. That no one can shut. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In scripture, key Stands for opportunities. Mm. Say opportunities. Opportunities. And what are opportunities? Opportunities are, example, be a good time to take a decision. Mm. An appropriate occasion to act in a certain way. You know, a moment where you will have to do something that something good will come out. Are we talking about opportunities? It's so important that maybe God is telling you that it's about time to go back to school. You 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 finished your first level of education, and you are still debating in your mind. You're still not very sure what the next step will be like. God is telling you this morning that a key gives you an opportunity. Amen. And God is telling you, I'm giving you an opportunity this morning. Hallelujah. You, may, you may want to go back to school. The time is right. Go back to school. Amen. You may want to repent from an old lifestyle. Maybe you're living wrongly. I mean, everybody talks to you. It doesn't seem to be like anything you care about. You live in your own way. You are a lot to yourself. You are committing adultery. You are, you are drinking. You are smoking. You are on drugs. You are living in a bad habit. But God is telling you, an opportunity is coming to you again. Amen. An opportunity is coming Amen. to you again. An opportunity is coming to you again. Amen. And he wants you to repent from your old lifestyle. Amen. An opportunity is coming to you. Maybe you want to start a project. Is there something that you've been thinking about? You know, a project that you want to take on. Is it a building project? Is it a business you want to do? Is it an expansion you want to bring in your, in your business? What is, what is it? There's something God is telling you. Today is an opportune time. 
Maybe when you judge yourself from day one to today, you haven't shown much love and much devotion to God. You know, you've done things your own way. You've, you've served God your own way. You've done things at your convenience. When a meeting is called and you don't feel like you, don't, you want to show up, you don't show up. You don't care about it. You treated God like he's nobody. But God is telling you again that with the key of David, I'm giving you another opportunity. Amen. I want you to show me love. Amen. I want you to show me devotion. Amen. God is not only interested in your visa to travel. No. He cares about that though. He's not only interested in your, your family to give you a child if you are barren. Neither is he only interested to bless your bank account. He's also telling you this morning very clearly, I want to give you an opportunity that you bring back to me your first love. Amen. You bring back to me your first devotion. Amen. What you had when I first called you. Wow. Say first love. First love. Say it again, first love. First love. Say it very boldly, first love. First love. So the question for you this morning is, which opportunity is the Holy Spirit ministering to you? Is it about your career? Is it about your ministry? Is it about your business? Is it about your work in church? Don't be idle. Don't, don't take things for granted. Don't make assumptions that, well, everything is okay. But no. It's an opportunity. A time to take a decision. An occasion to act. A moment to make some take some steps forward. And go out of something that you're doing that isn't very good. 